Talk a little bit about how you feel about doing this. It's funny because I didn't think I was going to be nervous. But I am, yeah. I am quite nervous. What do you think I'm not sure it's about taking the clothes off, though. I think it's just about um, what kind of questions you're going to ask. Okay. Yeah. Is that a hood or a hat? Hat. Can you drop it? Mm-hmm. What do you think are the assumptions that people make about you at first glance? Intimidating. Intimidating? Mm. Why? Um, I call it a resting bitch face. It's just like when I'm playing, I look slightly look quite aggressive. I mean, I'm not like that at all, but, but I think because I'm really shy and I always have been, I was pushed around a lot throughout school and everything, and I just now in my head, in the back of my mind, I never want to be that kind of person that just like people walk all over. I just couldn't stand up for myself. I wanted to be like someone else. Who did you want to be with? All the other girls. What were they like? Blonde, white, blue-eyed, sexy. All the boys fancied them. I had braids, everyone had straight hair, then I got straight hair and it then felt weird and I actually wore a hat for two years. <laughs> Just didn't take a hat off. Because uh, were you embarrassed of your yeah, natural hair? Yeah, like so embarrassed. So embarrassed. Any positive influences in your life? Um, no one. None? Not like there wasn't any one that you looked to or like? No. No. Someone asked me this the other day, do you think people are born sad? And I actually do. I think I actually was born like quite least, slightly sad. And I just really remember just being like, I'm I can't be bothered to like feel any emotions anymore. So I just kind of like cut off from all of it. Stopped kind of confiding in people. Withdrew from all my friends in London and tried really hard to fit in with all my friends from boarding school. I remember getting drunk on my 14th birthday and trying some spliff and then like very quickly it just went on to coke. But I was never really into that. And then as soon as I found ketamine, it kind of just went down. What's that? Um, it's like a, just a downer. It's a, so rank. It's like a horse tranquilizer. That was the one that really got me. Because it's just numbs you out. How much drugs were you doing? Just every day. You know, my favorite was just sitting in my room and doing by myself. And then, what happened was, you know, certain people, you know, if they weren't going out on the Tuesday night, I could easily find out, find another group that were going out on that day. And then maybe they were going out on Wednesday, so I'd hang out with them. And then why'd you stop? Oh, just, I don't think I necessarily wanted to stop. It was just, um, my parents sent me to Arizona. It was my choice to come out with everything and be like, I've got a problem. This is what's been happening. I don't, you know, they've definitely always kn known that I took drugs and like kind of, I just don't think they knew the amount. It was like a proper intervention. I, my psychiatrist, Claire, she's the most amazing woman in the world. She was there and I was like, and then in the other corner was this other woman. I was like, what the fuck is this woman doing? She was like, this is, so-and-so from Cottonwood. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And I just remember, I just sat there. Everyone was crying, nothing. I think I might have smiled or something. Yeah. Something really weird. But by that time, <laughs> by that time, I just did not feel anything. And the people that I'd grown up with, they take a lot of drugs, so it wasn't necessarily unheard of, it wasn't, it was normal. Yeah. So I got away with it for a long time. How did the modeling thing happen and did that like affect your image of yourself at all? Yeah, in that way? and definitely, I think rejection from that. Rejection from modeling? Yeah. Negatively affected? Yeah, I think, you know, losing out on jobs and, you know, um, and being judged on your appearance, you know. I definitely grew a second skin and got used to it, but more so now I've realised that it definitely didn't 
it definitely contributed to like a lot of the things that I feel about myself. So at first, was it at all like a booster to your self-esteem that you got scouted? I don't know if it was a booster. I've never like shoved it in people's faces. Yeah. Um, and I definitely don't think it made me feel any better about myself being in a magazine or right. doing anything. You know, you know, I think if you don't like being in your skin, it doesn't matter how many times people say you're beautiful or how many jobs you get or whatever it is. I just didn't, I didn't want to be Adua. That self-hatred is something that I work on day, like on a daily basis. So, okay, so let's go to Arizona. Tell us what happened in Arizona. I first went into detox, and then I left detox, and the sudden realization that I was in the middle of the desert by myself, I then asked to go back in. To detox? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can't, sorry, I don't want to be around any of these people. Was put in my room with other roommates, and was like, no, thank you, went back in. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, no, thank Oh, you did go back? Yeah. Back. They let you do that? It wasn't even the roommates, I was just literally had a panic attack. I was like, I cannot believe I'm here. I was so shy, I didn't want to make friends. I didn't want people to say hi to me and like be in a new gang. I didn't want to do and that. And you had also no drugs to make it less anxiety producing. Right? Exactly. So no things. running away. For the first time I was just like there. I, um, I met these women a lot older than me, and they just looked after me. That was wrong. They were also there in rehab? Mm hmm I called them my mothers. They just, we sat every night, um, every lunchtime, every morning, and we just chatted, smoked cigarettes. They like really loved me. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that love helped you to mm. love yourself? Yeah. Not love myself, just confide, just actually start talking about Connect. it. Connect. Yeah. And I hadn't done that. I pushed everyone away and these, these women, they definitely, you know, it, Definitely wasn't easy after I left Cottonwood, but they got me to an emotional level. I was so not used to do, like feeling all these things. I was so not used to people asking me how I feel. You know, I never cried in public. You know, I've been holding my tears, tears back in this whole thing for ages, and then some, you know, I'm still like that. I have to work really hard to just not put up a front. I didn't want to leave in the end. I know, I was just going to ask you. Yeah, I so did not want to go. Um, but don't get me wrong, I mean, I went to three more treatments after that. Why? What happened when you came back? Um, I went into like sober living, like a halfway house. I overdosed straight away. I was found in the bathroom. I had to be taken to hospital. I had just lost a friend to an overdose, so my dad was like, I just can't believe that that hasn't taught you. You know, in Arizona, they really told me, they were like, Adra, take it slow, don't overwhelm yourself. And like the first thing I did when I got back was try and get myself back into life, hang out with everyone be this new person, and I just so wasn't there yet. On the 3rd of October, I tried to commit suicide. Last year? Mm. That's after the relapse? Mm. What'd you do? An overdose. Yeah. And then what happened? Um, I was in a coma for four days. Um, it was a close one. My parents put me in psychiatric care for a month. There I was just kind of kept safe from myself, really. I didn't, I spent a lot of time just sitting in my room. Cottonwood only got me to a level. When I got back to London, I was still making lovely friends. I had a great counsellor. Um, it all seemed to be going 
On the outside, everything was going pretty well. But inside, I just was just so tired and in a lot of pain. So what's happened since then? Um, at Christmas, I suddenly like snapped out of it. I had my cousins around me, I had my mum and dad, my sister, I was having to build this relationship. I looked around and I was like, fuck, I'm so happy to still be here. And then from then on, I just put my all into it. I started opening up, I started doing everything that everyone told me to do. I went to meetings, I saw my counsellor regularly. And you've been in a much better space since then? The opportunities that are like coming my way, I mean, it's amazing. Like what? Girls Talk is my baby, a charity that I'm hopefully setting up, what well, I am in the making of setting up. It's just about opening up a space within schools where we as women and girls can talk about whatever we want. They tell me things that they would never tell anyone. So I've got to meet them halfway. I've got to start, you know, confiding in them, these 15-year-old girls. And I can't tell you how nervous that makes me feel. But as soon as I do, you know, I'm 23, they're 15, we're still going through the same things. Wow. And that, I mean, it doesn't matter. They're Hispanic, they come from a different background. I'm from London, privileged. Women, girls, I mean, and that is fucking That's magic. So awesome. wow. When do you feel the most vulnerable? When I cry. Because I feel like I'm putting down the front and everyone can see me. Pants? Mm hmm When do you feel the most beautiful? Not all photos, but especially when my boyfriend takes pictures of me. Because it's me. Mm. Versus? Versus me with makeup or pretending to be someone else. Can you take off your earrings? Or? Yeah. What do you believe in? I believe in quite a lot nowadays, like which, is, which is lovely. I believe that I'm definitely loved. I believe that I'm not alone. <laughs> I believe in happiness. That's yeah. fucking amazing. Why in your body is it a good place to be? Because I realise I just I can't be anyone else. I might not love myself all the time, but... Pretty, I'm pretty all right. Mm -hmm. That was great. Pretty cool. <laughs> you are, you're amazing. Thank you so much, that was incredible. Oh, thank you. That's a beautiful, beautiful like message to give to a lot of people. Oh, thanks. Really, really, really awesome. And congratulations. Let me thank you, you have